All right, guys, we got another great episode for you today. We have Hunter Franz from Germany. Um, he's producing Boland's Python successfully in captivity. Uh, so that's a big deal. And he also has a bunch of other species of animals. Um, you know, we're going to go through it. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Okay, um, so on just about every episode I feel we've done so far for this show, um, Bolins have come up in every single one. Um, but, you know, there's very few people in the United States to really talk to about Bolins and very few people that have really been successful working with them. So, honestly, having you on this week is awesome. Um, I really hope you're going to give us a little bit of insight on things that you've done right and done wrong with the species over the years. And... I won't necessarily say it's a species a lot of people are going to jump into because the price tag right now is a little bit high in the United States. I think last I checked, almost as high as $10,000. So it's not exactly a, hey, let's experiment and hope for the best kind of species to work with. But um, I'd like to hear about what kind of got you into them. Um, I'm not sure if it was the challenge, if you just picked up one, fell in love with it, and then just started wanting to work with Bones Pythons. Nee, der hat gefragt, ob du jetzt gerade mm. schon mal Böllens hattest. Ja, oder? ja, no. Uh, I, my, I, I got my first Böllens Python in 1988. Uh, wow. Yes. Uh, I, I made a, with my father, I made an expedition to uh, a West Area for, for about eight weeks. And we uh, find during this trip uh, three Böllens Python, adult ones, yes. And I brought them home with me. And uh, I had them for several years, but it was uh, the sex was they were all male, so I had no female. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that wasn't so so nice. Uh, the biggest one uh, was the biggest bones I have ever seen, about eight dot eight kilogram and three and a half meters long, a very oh, wow. huge snake. Uh, and I, uh, some years later, I I bought a, a little uh, female from a from a broker, but uh, the female uh, was sick and and wasn't uh, uh, live so long. So I had the most time uh, females in uh, during this uh, century. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for about uh, six years ago. Uh, a good friend of mine is an importer of reptiles from Indonesia, and uh, I asked him if he could uh, uh, import for me some some snakes, and so I got four Burns Python babies uh, from this shipment from him. Yeah. This was six years ago. Ah, uh, yes, and uh, yeah, they are, uh, they were farm bred, but I think. Uh, they were from the wild. They, they had different size. One, one had, had parasites. The other three ones were free for, free of parasites. They are, make a little problems uh, about feeding, but I uh, get them start feeding with, with chicken f uh, feathers on the head of, of the rats, of the baby rats. And, oh. um, and after uh, some months, they was feeding very, very good. Yes, and these are uh, the snakes I'm producing last year babies and this year babies. Yes. Last year they, they, they were five years old and now they are six years old. So last year they were five years old when they first you first had them breed? Yes, uh, we, we, with four years of age, uh, I, I, have to, uh, I had the first weddings and uh, one year later, I had also meetings, uh, but without a, a, in this year with a success, uh, the female laid uh, 12 eggs. They looked very, very nice and very good, but only three, uh, three eggs were fatal. Oh. Yeah. And, and out of these three eggs, two baby birds hatched. Okay. And this was last year. This was last year, yes. Okay. And this year you're a bit more successful? Yes, a little bit more successful. I, I had uh, 70 eggs from the same female. 
it's it's a big big uh, clutch yes uh 15x were fatal yes wow uh, and uh but uh, only eight babies hatched yes uh, uh some eight only yes better than nothing yes yeah uh, but but if you have fertile eggs and, and they lay a lot of time in the incubator it's it's very hard to see that during the incubation uh some of the eggs died, yes, and that's, uh, I don't know why, was was very hard to see, yes. But I had luck, uh, uh, two days for, for the hatching date, uh, I had uh, 11 eggs, and but three uh, babies failed to hatch, and, and eight babies hatched. Yes, it was very, very nice. Did you uh, cut the eggs open? At all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, after uh, 24 hours, I, I cut the eggs. I, I opened the eggs, uh, and uh, I found one, one baby. He, he makes a little cut in the eggs. Where was that? And 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 the other two uh, uh, were also dead. Yes. Wow. That's so, interesting. I mean, go ahead, Dave. Oh, sorry. Um, I just um, I wanted to ask you about the incubation process. Um, how are you placing the eggs? Are you having them hover above water? And what temperatures are you keeping them at? And for how long? Okay. I uh, I uh, at the first time I, I led the eggs by the female about two and a half weeks, and then uh, I. Suddenly, I, it smells a little bit. Then I took the uh, eggs uh, away from the female, and, and uh, that two eggs uh, uh, were dead. So I took the eggs in the incubator uh, on pearl light, and over the pearl light, I had uh, a crit, something like a crit. And uh, the female. Uh, incubated the, the eggs for two weeks, I could uh, put a, what's the word? A, a thermometer inside. Do you know what? <laughs> I don't know the, exactly the English name. Uh, to to uh, take to, the temperature. Something to take the temperature right. with. Yep, thermometer okay. is what we would say, but that's fine. Say. That, that's right. And, uh, and I uh, saw that uh, the incubation temperature from the female was uh, uh, 31 degrees Celsius. Yes, we, in, we are in Europe. We are uh, we are measuring with Celsius, not with Fahrenheit, like the states. Uh, I don't know what's that's in Fahrenheit. And the same in incubation temperature uh, I I took for my incubator. And I have a very big big box with perlite uh, on the bottom and and. Uh, a grid over the power light and and a, a, a glass on the top of the box. Yes. Okay. And I'm not sure if I heard it. How long between from when they lay to when they hatch? Uh, how long? Uh, it uh, took for the first uh, hatchling uh, uh, 79 days and the last hatchling 48 days. Okay. Okay. That that's a significant difference. <laughs> yes. Yes. But but I cut the eggs. They they, uh, they had the possibility to go to go out. Yes. But the, uh, some days uh, the last one uh, stayed some days in the eggs before they uh, came out. Yes. That's great. Okay. Um. And uh, jumping back, yes. how do you keep your animals? Can you tell us a little bit about your enclosure, um, your heat, um, hot side, cool side, um, airflow, anything like that? Yes, I, I try to explain it, this to you. It's not so easy. I, I have them all separate in, in cages. They are about a uh, little bit more than two, two meters long, uh, 80 centimeters wide, and, and the high of also 80 centimeters. I, uh, I have a, a heat pad uh, in it where they can heat their whole body in, in one part uh, of the cage. The other part is unheated. 
I, I have a, a, a neon light on the top of each uh, cage and I have a big hiding box in the cage mm. and, and, and I keep them uh, on, on newspaper because it's, it's not nice, but it's very, very easy to clean, yes. And uh, yes, uh, the room temperature is it's very different from the season of the year. I, I try to keep them cool as much I can. Yeah, that's about now it's very hot in Germany. I have about 27 degrees at the daytime and at the nighttime, not less than 20 degrees Celsius. But in the winter time, I, I try to keep them co cooler about 23, 24 degrees Celsius at the daytime and at the nighttime, I cool them down till 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah. But all of them, they had at the daytime the possibility to heat them up on the heat pad. Yeah. Gotcha. Ten, so 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, where we're from. Yeah. So that's significantly cool for a, a snake, um, for a python. Yes, it's very um, cool for, python. for us. And so I think in the United States, I think one of the problems that we have is people keep them too warm. And I think maybe you're doing it uh, right and having it colder is a better idea. Yep. Yes. Uh, we've spoken with, um, there's a breeder in the United States, Vin Russo, and he was discussing the luck he had with them. And he did get a clutch of eggs years and years ago. And he had mentioned keeping them at a much cooler temperature. Um, you know, I, again, you know, I, that's what he did, but they were not fertile eggs. I'm not even sure if he had a male in with it. I cannot remember for sure. Um, so when you have the hide box, okay, how about this? When your female lays her eggs, do you find that she does it near the hot spot or the cool spot of the cage? <laughs> yes, I, uh, I, I, uh, after the mating season, I uh, I I saw it, or I I I saw the the female what was grabbing, uh, gravid. She she was laying a lot of time on the heat bed, so I I took the uh, the normal hiding box out of the uh, of the cages and 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 give her give her a better bigger box with some uh, sparkling moss in it on the key on the cold uh, place in the cage or on the other side from from the intake and uh, she was uh, going in the box and out of the box for for about four weeks before they lay the eggs uh, several times uh, each day mm. so i i had the the egg box on the cool side on the cage yes okay and they always use the um, lay box. No, last last year, my, my first clutch, uh, clutch of last year, she uh, she didn't uh, use the box. She she uh, laid the eggs in in the whole cage. So I I put the newspaper out of the cage, uh, taking uh, took in the cage a lot of sparkling moss, yes, and uh, and show so she had no problem to to lay the eggs in in the cage. So were the eggs spread out over the whole cage? Last year, yes. This year, not. This year, she, she made a, a nice clutch, round clutch, and, and, and she was laying around the clutch yes, for, for about more than two weeks. Uh, then I took the, the eggs away of the, because of the, of the bad eggs. If, if they don't, if I didn't have bad egg, I tried to, to let out the, the eggs during the whole incubation. I think that that's not so so bad for for birds. I think that must be working. But with the bad eggs in the middle, it was uh, too much risk to to let her sit on the eggs. Yeah. So to me, that makes sense that they need a good nesting spot. Um, if they just spread their eggs out, they could have held them for too long because if they didn't have a good spot, or they the female didn't think she had a good spot to nest. So um, we had someone on before, Ron St. Pierre, that talks a lot about uh, nesting and, and how certain animals need nesting, like a spot. And I think um, I think you're, you're spot on. I think that really makes sense that if you don't give them a nesting spot, they'll hold on to the eggs for too long 
and maybe they'll get become infertile and then they just lay them all over the place yeah. because they didn't have a spot i think that's that's smart yes i uh, i i changed a little bit from from last year to this uh, this year last year i gave her a, a much bigger box yes but uh, she doesn't she, like uh, she doesn't like it so much so i i was thinking uh, the box is is uh, too big in in the in, in in some picture for Ari, I saw this, that the, the native uh, Burns python uh, laying uh, eggs in very uh, small holes. Yes, so I decided this year to give her a smaller box, big enough for the female and the eggs, but but not so many space around. And and this year she uh, she accepted uh, the box uh, very well. Yes. Yeah, one of the um, things that. Uh, Ron said, Ron St. Pierre, is to have a big box, but fill it with um, mm. sphagnum moss and loose uh, wood chips, things like that, so the snake can burrow or the animal. He, he was using it for uh, lizards and things like that, but something where they can burrow and make their own space. So the box is big, but it's very, very full of a, a, an easy, mm -hmm. movable bedding, maybe. Um, the site is mulch, I think he might have used sphagnum moss. He might have did a mix with some dirt in there also. There's a lot of different ways, but I think yeah. what he said, and um, I believe was he did, I think it was crocodile monitors or croc monitors we were discussing yeah. that the females wouldn't even cycle if they didn't have a viable place to lay their eggs in the cage. Um, so once they started putting these nesting boxes in the cage, it allowed the female or gave her the chance to actually cycle. Otherwise, they weren't even getting dud eggs. Yeah. Um, but, but curious. But the egg, yes, I have the eight laying box, not a whole year in, in the cage. I, I tried this, but uh, I have also a smaller hiding box. Yes. And during the non breeding season, the female is uh, all the time laying in the smaller hiding box, not in the egg laying box. So, so for this reason, I, 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 I took it away. And only during the breeding season, I take the uh, egg laying box in, in the cage. Yes. But, but they need a small box. That's, that's correct. They, they want to have contact overall. Yes. And, and she made, uh, she, she made one thing. She, she grabbed the sparkling most away. Yeah, the sparkling moss was on the side of the female, and she was laying uh, on the bottom of the plastic box yeah, and uh, made a ball around the eggs. Very interesting to, to see here. Yeah. Oh. Do you think that's because of humidity? Yeah, I, I, I think perhaps it's, uh, she was saying uh, the sparkling moss is too wet. I don't know, yes. But I, I, I had the same... Uh, uh, I, I saw the same thing uh, by, by other pythons also, by, by tree pythons. They also, if they, if you take sparkling moss in the egg laying box, they, they take it away and, uh, and, and are sitting, uh, uh, and then they are sitting on, on, on the normal bottom, on the plastic bottom of, of the uh, egg laying box, not on the sparkling moss. Yeah. And, and the same was also by the, by the Burns python. Yeah. Um, do you, when you pair them, do you have a certain month of the year that you always start your pairings? Are you guys palpitating, feeling for follicles or ultrasounding your animals ahead of time? And, uh, I, 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 I cycle the animals in, in the winter time. It's, uh, much more colder in Germany and, and only in the winter time, I, I get the, the deep night temperatures. And uh, I'm I'm watching my animals. I'm uh, have them separate for the whole year. And uh, normally, late October, beginning of November, the males are moving more, and they are moving more and more. And then the males are ready for breeding. Yes. And then I take the males to the females. And I have two males. I switch the males. I I, I let them in the cage for for some days, and then. I, I, I take the other male in the cage. Sometimes I take both male to, males in the cage, 
But if I take both males, males in the cage, they are, they are not biting each other or something like this. And they are ne not mating. Yes, I must uh, mating. I must do uh, one male out of the cage for, uh, for successful uh, mating. Yeah. But, but you, I think it then, yeah. Okay. Are you I, doing I any... down with the temperature, what? down with the lights, yes. In this room, there's no chillers for cold the temperature. So yeah. the temperature is uh, on the outside temperature. Uh, it's when it's warm outside, then the room are going to heat off. And, and it, when it's cold outside, the room goes down. So we only can keep them cold when we have winter time. As I, I have ne no air condition in this room. Yes, I, I have a heater in the room. If it's going too cold in the winter time, I can heat the room. Yes, but uh, I I let the, uh, the heating out for a long time uh, in spring uh, in in autumn till it uh, gets too cold here. Then I must heat the room a, a little bit. Yeah. But I'm but, but I'm not working with air conditioning systems. So the only thing I could do I could uh, increase the temperature, uh, but not de decreases with a co uh, cooling system. Yes, yeah. uh, and I think it's not absolutely possible for the Berlin Spiden if if you have the right temperature and you have also by air conditioned cooling you you get a very very dry air and I I think they they don't like it or they they need a high humidity uh, in the cages. Yes. Yeah. I would agree with that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your feeding schedule going into breeding and your feeding schedule during pairings? Yes, uh, in in the late summer, uh, beginning autumn, I feed the females a little bit more than normal, so they get a little bit stronger than than at the normal time. Uh, for for the males, yes. Uh, normally, uh, I, I feed them less than uh, than the normal time. But when they are ready to breed, there's normally they, they stop feeding us. Yes. So uh, I only feed uh, the female uh, the females during the breeding season. Yes, and and they are heavy feeder during this time. Yes, so yeah, all the time heavy feeder, but, <laughs> <laughs> but during this time much more. Yes, and and the males. Uh, they, are, they are less feeding uh, uh, in in the high season of uh, or in the high breeding season. The, the males are are normally not not feeding. Uh, they, are, they, they they don't take food yes, during this time. Do you feed them once a week or once a month? <laughs> if if you feed them once a week, you have very nice big birds biting, but they are not breeding. Uh, I uh, baby birds biting. Uh, if I raise them up. I'm feeding once a week. Yes, uh, when they are about three or four years old, I I feed them uh, much less than this. Uh, it depends on 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 the time of the year, but all three or four weeks, uh, I'm I'm feeding them, and uh, it depends sense. also on on the female. How heavy is the female? Yes, I'm 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 not I have a plan and so yet. Every week, nature, they, there's no feeding plan. Yes, mm -hmm. if I had an, uh, enough rats, they got more rats. If I had for a longer time no rats, they get no rats. Yes, that's that's like in, uh, in the nature. Yes, but to get them breeding, they, they must uh, have a very good condition and must be, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. They, they must be in good condition, but not too fat. I think when the female is too fat, you, you get no eggs. Do you find that same idea with males? If they get too fat, they don't want to breed? Yeah, that's the same with males. It's males yeah. from, from, from not, not only from, from Berlin's pythons, also from, from other pythons or boas. If they are too, too fat, uh, the, the fat males are bad breeder yes the cine small males are most of the time the best breeder so. yeah we uh I, I find that as well um 
it's very different here in the United States. A lot of people want to feed um, every week, uh, just like uh, for ball pythons. And um, not everything is should eat every week. No, that's yeah, and I think that's that's too much for for, for birds pythons. They, uh, they they are eating every week. That's not a problem, yes? but they're getting too fat and. And uh, a fat snake is normally, the most of the time, not a good breeding snake. Yes, by ball python it's working. Yes, but but by uh, snakes they are more difficult to breed. You must keep them in good condition, but not too fat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, what humidity do you guys keep your bullens at? What percentage? Uh, Yes, the, the humidity is about uh, 60 to 80 percent. Yes, yes. I, 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 I spray them several times uh, with uh, warm, warm water, uh, room, room temperature water. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, and I try to to keep the humidity uh, as high as possible. Also during the co cold seasons, uh, not only mm -hmm. the, during the warm seasons. Yes. And I'd, uh, I had never a, a problem uh, by them with respiratory infection. Yes. Yeah. I, I spray them also if they're on uh, 50 degree uh, Fahrenheit on 10, 10 uh, grad Celsius. Yes. I, I spray them also. That's, uh, I had never problem with this. Um, that, so obviously, a lot of people want to. Um, figure this the species out and we have i have friends that produced eggs but none of them were fertile sometimes maybe 25 eggs and i think in the wild they're a snake that could produce 30 eggs or more and so do you think you'll get to a point where in captivity you'll be seeing a 30 egg clutch possibly Possibly it's everything, but but I never heard uh, from uh, such big clutches of Berlin pythons. Uh, uh, the the most uh, clutches from uh, captive uh, or, or from wild caught uh, animals uh, late later eggs in captivity were about fifty to twenty. Yeah, I think they could uh, produce perhaps more than twenty, but thirty or more. I. Perhaps it's possible, but I've never heard about it. Yeah, I wonder. Um, obviously, there's a lot of a lot of different things in, that go into it. Uh, so, what size um, food do you feed? If you're doing every three weeks, you're saying, is it a large rat or is it a, a medium rat? No, it's a large rat. The biggest rat as a rats I had as they are very very big rats. It's not. Not a small rat. If if you're feeding uh, small rats, you must uh, feed two or three. Yes, that's a they they get very very big food items, but it's not a problem for them to yeah uh, to swallow it. Yes, uh, they 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 could swallow uh, very big uh, food items. Yes, not as a big rat. Yes, that makes sense. Um, so. I'm really fascinated. I haven't started working with them. I've held them. Um, I'm learning as much as I can. You said that sometimes you'll put two males in with one female and they don't fight, but they don't breed. Have you ever thought, um, do you think that they could be communal with more than one female? Like several males and several females? Uh Yes, that's that's working. I, I I think that's that's not a problem. I'm I'm also breeding diamond python, and in diamond python it's different. You could take more males in the cage, yes, and mm -hmm. and one more male is breeding, and the other males are sitting around. If the male is uh, ready with breeding, uh, the next male is uh, is is breeding a female. Uh, and by Burns python, I uh, I I hadn't seen this, yes. Uh, they are both in the cage and they are interesting on the female and on each other. But uh, if I had two males in the cage, I, I never had uh, uh, matings uh, during this time. 
if I later on, if I put one out of the cage, yes, then the next day uh, the remaining uh, male in the cage uh, starts breeding, uh, starts starts males. Mm. Yeah, um, we have everybody, of course, has all the, these theories, and um, <laughs> we all want to try it, but we don't have a large enough group, or we don't have any. You know, some of us. Um, so this is really, really good information. I think uh, I, I really want you to be successful. And I think the world needs you to be successful and needs other people that are, are working this out to be successful. Uh, eventually, I, I'd love to see maybe the third generation of captive born babies uh, to be viable and producing and, and really, it, that would be awesome. It would be amazing. Uh, this would be great, yes. Yeah. So, I, I love Bolins, but we can we can move on to something else. Dave hopped off a little bit because his phone was overheating. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's back on yet. He's looking like he's trying to get back on. But um, I saw that you are producing dry Markon. And uh, so tell me about your experience with them. That's a much different animal. They eat uh, different things. Let's see if Dave it's on. Yes. Uh well, I, 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 I produced my, uh, my, my first uh, Eastern Indigo snakes also in the 80s, yes. oh. uh, without problems, uh, got big clutches, about 10 eggs, uh, all fertile. I had no problems uh, with, uh, with hatching the babies. And, uh, but uh, at the beginning of the 19th, I, I lost my, my big female. And I was all the time trying to get a, a, a big female for, for the breeding group, but it's, uh, it's never worked. And so uh, the Eastern Indigo was running out of my stock. Uh, and they get very, very rare in Europe. It was very hard to, to find some, uh, some new Indigos. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. They are now produced in a bigger number. But, but you have a waiting list that is long for about five or 10 years or longer by, by the month breeders. So uh, last year, I, I had a chance from, from, a, from an older guy in Germany to, uh, to get a bigger breeding, uh, a breeding pair. He uh, starts uh, or stops uh, keeping reptiles. So I, I bought this pair and uh, since... Uh, Beginning of, of last year, I had uh, Eastern Indigos in my uh, breeding facilities again. I, and I'm very happy uh, against this. Yeah. Yes, but but successful like in the 80s, I, I uh, get this year, I got this year uh, seven eggs, uh, very nice looking eggs, uh, but only four were, uh, were fertile and uh, three babies hatched. That's Better than better than none, better than nothing. Yeah. But uh, like in the in the eighties, I I produced from ten ten eggs, ten babies, and this uh, yeah, it it was uh, different. But uh, I'm I'm a very fan of the of the Eastern Indigos, and and I keep all babies for me. And at the moment, I I, I get some uh, two and uh, one year old uh, Indigos also. Uh, at the moment, I have about eight indigos in my facility yes that's great yeah, yeah we love them I, I think they're really fun um i think they are very uh they, they're very curious so when you're you're holding them you can tell that they're an intelligent snake they really look around it, it's they're very fun i really enjoy them um we aren't breeding them yet yeah. but we uh we did have black tail kribos <laughs> which are, you know, like a cousin of almost same Trimarcon. And, and I, um, I really enjoy those as well. Uh, I, I really want to get back into them. So it's really cool that you're producing them. So you said it's, it's difficult to get them in Germany. Um, something I know Dave wants to talk about and uh, we want to talk about is how hard is the regulations in Germany? Like there's a lot of regulations. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the, it, it, it depends on the on the spaces. For for indigos, we have no regulation in Germany. That that's very easy. Yes, they are, really? they are not protected. You can breed them. You can uh, uh, without problem. Uh, so we have no regulation for for trimachon uh, in, in whole Europe. Uh, we had a, a bigger pro problem with, with Eastern uh, indigos. Uh, we uh, had a lot of inbreeding in Europe. Yeah, it's, it's nearly impossible to get some uh, new stuff from from the states to 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 uh, to get new blood in our uh, colonies. That's uh, that's a very big problem. Yes? It, it it would be very great. If if we could some uh, make some uh, exchange with some uh, U.S. breeder to to get new blood in the European uh, bloodlines of uh, Eastern Indigos. Yeah. yeah, there's a we had um, black pearl or black pearl reptiles on. Yeah, and, um, yeah he produces a lot. Uh, they produce a lot, I guess, and. Um, I don't know about they they their list of how many people want them is always longer than how many he produces every year. So yeah, it's hard for him to say he wants to, to export them to another country when he can sell them all here in the United States. So yeah. it's tough. But but, but uh, he he said to me that he get no permit to to export them. Oh. I I think that's uh, that's a problem. He can ship them with, with a permit out of uh, California. Yes, that's that's uh, that's not a problem. But out of the states, uh, he, he he sold this to me. He got uh, no permit uh, for Eastern Indigos. Uh, yeah, I, I try to get some from uh, from Black Pearls <laughs> since many years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. Um, <laughs> We, we always look at, so we have, uh, Dave and I both have ball pythons and we have a few other species and we know that in Europe there's regulations of like how big your enclosure is and um, what type of species you need to, you're able to keep. Do you see that, that it is getting harder to keep animals you want or is it just a myth that us from the united states think <laughs> yes uh we, we we have some uh regulation about the cage size that's true but but that's not uh, a big uh factor to to keep them in more states in in germany it uh, it gets very, very harder to hold poisonous snakes but, but non-poisonous snakes it's it's not a big problem if you want to keep one you, you can keep them. Uh, you, you, you need the papers, yes, for for uh, appendix one animals, you need the CITES, yes, for appendix two animals, you need only uh, a, a letter of authorization from from the breeding uh, uh, guy, yes. So that's 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 not uh, much different uh, than in the States, uh, I think, yes. But uh, poisonous snake, I'm from Baden-Württemberg, it's one state in Germany, uh, we have no regulations for keeping poisonous snakes, but the next sna uh, state, uh, only 15 uh, kilometers far away from, from me, is Hessen. And uh, there is this, it's very hard at the moment to keep uh, poisonous snakes. Uh, but non poisonous, I think, is not a big problem in Europe. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So, one reason Benjamin is asking this, and I don't know if you follow the United States market, but um, it Right now, especially, almost every day we're hearing about a new rule or regulation, whether it's nationwide or just based in a state. Uh, mostly on our bigger pythons, like the reticulated python, the Burmese python. Um, there was talk about anacondas years ago, but they kind of made it off the list. But um, there's a lot of laws that we believe could be changed in the United States where it's going to make it very, very hard for us to keep some of the animals we want. Um, now we've gone through this before and this is a fight we've always dealt with. Um, that's why Benjamin's asking from where you are, if the government is stepping in and trying to over-regulate or take anything from you guys or not so much. Yes. The, it, it's depending on the state. Uh, in, in the state hasn't, uh, they had also a regulation for, for big snakes for, 
for reticulating python anacondas and something like this but uh, that's only one state the most states in germany uh, had not so big regulation but uh, in the future i think they <laughs> try to get more regulations also in the other states uh, i don't like it but uh, it's it's very hard to to do about uh, something about it uh. mm. but, but i heard this also from the states uh, years ago it was not a problem to to keep an anaconda or, or a, a bernese python and now it's it's getting harder and harder in much uh, in much, uh, in some states yes yeah that, that's not fine i think <laughs> so and okay and to jump around a little bit I would love to hear about what it was like being a breeder in the 80s, um, because even in the United States, the market or just the hobby wasn't quite there yet. And there were a few people involved. Um, was it the same for you in Germany? Were you one of the few breeders or were those, was there a bigger community there? No, it, it, it was uh, like in the, in the States. Uh, in the 80s, I... I got a lot of snake, uh, snakes from from the states, from Tom Crutchfield uh, and and guys like this. And uh, but it, it was also absolutely different uh, to get some snakes in uh, in the eighties. Uh, you had not the possibility to to go to a to a snake show or to a, to a big. Uh, uh, animal shop to to buy all snakes uh, most of the time you must go to the country and try to find some try to catch some try to get some uh, uh, a license to to export them my my first corn snake i i uh, went to to florida uh, two times to get my first corn, uh, corn snake because at, at this this time corn snakes were uh, very rare in, in in Europe, yes. And now you get a corn snake here for for two and a half dollar. It's different. At at this uh, century, you you must go out and find your own snake. Uh, and uh, I I think that's uh, much nicer than now. That the most people don't know where their animals live. So I, I went to all, nearly all tropical countries in the world uh, to find some snake or, or to make some uh, expeditions uh, and, and, and to, to have a look when the agents, you must catch them at your own. Oh, you had no chance to get, or nearly no chance to get, uh, if you get some corn snakes, some bull snakes, Sometimes some ball pythons or some Bernese pythons, but 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 not so much like uh, like now. Now you, you if you have money, you could uh, really everything. Pretty much. That's go, it's but... crazy to think that. So when I'm like, oh man, I really want a snake. I look online, you know, and things like that, and I I think back <laughs> like, okay, maybe back then. Maybe back then you would get, you'd call somebody, you would, you know, I did, I would never think in any of my whole life, you know, I want a corn snake. I'm going to fly to America and catch one and then send it back. Like never crossed my mind. So that's, that's impressive. <laughs> so I imagine when you flew to the United States, uh, what year was it that you came out here for your first corn snake? Yes, about and uh, not only for the corn snake, also for holidays. I, I want to see the, the the state of Florida, Florida, but but the main reason was also to 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 catch some interesting snakes and and bring them back back to Germany. So we we, we my father and I and uh, and two friends we uh, we rent a, a, a mobile home and uh, drove through whole Florida and was looking. Uh, for some animals and was looking for so, some nice snakes. And the first time we we, we find some uh, some black razors, uh, some uh, Florida king snakes, and, and a lot of water snakes. But no, no corn snake. I must 
two years later, I must come again uh, to catch my first corn snake. Uh, it's not so easy uh, to find in the summertime. We were, uh, uh, were there in, in August. Uh, so that's the main uh, holiday season in Germany, but it's also the hottest season in, in Florida. Uh, it was very hard to, uh, to, to find uh, a corn snake there. Uh, but it was uh, one of my lovely snake I ever had to uh, it's great. I, I, I was going to, to 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 other tropical countries also to find some snakes and catch some snakes and bring them back. Uh, bring them back. But it's uh, at the moment it's, it's very hard or nearly impossible. Only in the, in the states it's possible. Like, uh, uh, it's still possible. Yes, if you go to to Florida or to Arizona, you you could buy a hunting license, and via hunting license you can uh, catch some some animals. Limited, some are protected. That's not allowed, but but you can catch them and, and bring them back to Germany. That's not a big, big deal. Yes, but it's it's. I think uh, the United States are one of only some uh, countries who, who allow this uh, at the moment. Mm. What huh. year was that? Your first trip. What? What? I don't know. When was the last time that was? In in Florida. Oh, let me thinking about. Uh, also in the eighties, eighty uh, one, about eighty one or eighty one uh, or eighty two. Yes, at beginning at beginning at the eighties. I, I at this time I was uh, uh, eighteen years old. Yes. Uh, this was my, but it was not my snake, my first snake trip. But it was uh, the farthest away. Yes, I I start keeping snakes with six year of age. Oh, so I'm I'm Very now, cool. I, I I have now snakes for fifty one years. It's wow. a long time. <laughs> yeah, Very and well. your your parents your parents were okay with that. Yeah, yes, uh, my 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 father is a is a fish man. Yes, he he likes fish, so uh, snakes are not so far away. Yes. And uh, to 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 get my uh, first snake, it, it was a garter snake from Canada. Uh, it, it 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 was not so hard for me. It took me a half year uh, to to talk with my parents, uh, but it, I, I I got it. Yes, I, it was very very nice. <laughs> And then it goes up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, and, and and we built a, a, a homemade um, made cage for for the snake, yes, and uh, put the uh, put the snake in, and uh, and the, the next day she was away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little hole in in, in the cage, and uh, and the snake was uh, in, in my uh, kinder room. But but uh, uh, one day after we. We, we found it again. <laughs> it, was, it was a crazy story, yes. <laughs> and you were six years old? Six years old. Wow. That's amazing. So That's when it. you came to the when you came to Florida in the eighties, um yes. To take an animal home with you, did you just put it in your suitcase back then, or did you have to talk to a guy like Tom Crutchfield or somebody else to send it back to Germany? No, at 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 this time, I uh, I I took it in, in, in the suitcase it, or, or, or in, in the hand luggage. It, it wasn't a problem. I, I I said to the officer, I have a snake with me. They asked what kind of snake. So harmless snake, uh, uh, a corn snake. Oh, okay, take it with you. But now it's not uh, not possible again. <laughs> it's it's not working at the it. moment. In the eighties, no. it, it was it, it it was not a a, a big problem. Yeah. Later on, I, I I got some Gila monster and other snake from from uh, uh, US breeder and and all these I I, I shipped with the, with the airline yes, but but at first uh, two times I uh, or two or three times I had the snakes uh, in my hand luggage. Mm. Okay. That's so great. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, in, in in 2000 or 2000, I uh, don't know, 2002, I was on the breeding uh, expo in Orlando and I uh, bought a lot of small uh, king snakes and, uh, and and something like this. And I had them also in my hand luggage. I, I, I go to a department for, uh, for fish and game and ask if, 
can I take the wisdom in, in my hand luggage? They said, yes, they gave me a piece of paper, yes, and it was not a problem. <laughs> and how many? I had a lot of that. The whole uh, hand luggage was full of snakes, only small <laughs> snakes like, like worms, but, but uh, 20, 25 or more, yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yes, at this uh, time, it was very, very easy to doing uh, uh, reptiles or snakes from from the states to to Europe. But uh, at at the moment, it's it's also uh, illegal in Germany. Uh, it's it's not allowed to, to to bring snakes into Germany in the hand, hand luggage. You, you you must ship them. Uh, yeah, uh, you you could ship them with the same flight. As you fly back, that's not a problem, but you must ship them separately, yes. Understandable. And, Times are changing. Yeah. What other countries did you visit? You said you visited <laughs> several <Australia>. countries. <laughs> do, do you have a lot of time? <laughs> we have as much time as you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Maybe some highlights. Yeah, hi highlights is uh, of, uh, East Africa, Kenya, South Africa, uh, Papua New Guinea, Irian Chaya, Australia, uh, I Indonesia, uh, Sumatra, uh, Bali, Java, uh, uh, Middle America, Costa Rica. Uh, 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 I made a big trip uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, ending of, no, at the beginning, uh, 89, uh, 1984 to South America, to uh, French Guiana, and uh, alone, only yeah. my, my backpack and me for for three months. Three I, months. Uh, I, 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 I was collecting their uh, emerald tree boas and, and some rainbow boas. Uh, it was a great <laughs> a crazy trip, uh, three months alone in the jungle. And uh, yeah, I, I made a lot of of experience during my, my trips there. Uh, and, and I think the, the, the West Irian and, and the uh, French Guyana trip, uh, they are the highlands, uh, highlights of my, uh, yes, of my travel hobby, yes. <laughs> wow. So you said your dad's into so, fish, but this is like real, like he's, he's fishing all over the world. He's sending you all over the place, huh? No, 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 <laughs> he, he, he's in, in, in aquaristic. He, he's not a fisherman. Eh? He, oh, he 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 had since he is five years old. Uh, he had uh, fishes in in tanks, yes, like like terroristic, yeah. yes, in, yeah. in the aquaristic. Yeah. But uh, seven years ago, he died. It was very hard for me because my dad was not only my dad; it was only uh, it was also my best friend, and and we took a lot of trips together. Uh, to to find some fish, to find some reptiles, to have some in the in the uh, uh, some fun in the nature. Uh, it was was a nice time. Yeah, That's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. My dad is like, don't bring any snakes around me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, same. Well, my dad deals, but um, it was my grandpa that kind of took me out fishing as a kid, and while out fishing, there were snakes and turtles and frogs and. I think going out and fishing as a kid would really got me into reptiles and nature as a whole. Um, and I'm sure just like you always wish there could have been one or two more adventures, but unfortunately there wasn't. Um, but okay. So how about this? What he should have asked you, what country haven't you gone to yet that you still would like to go to? That's, that's a very hard question because I were in so much uh, countries uh, the last years. And normally, at uh, at the moment, I'm I, I would be in Australia, but but I get no visa to go there uh, uh, due, due, due to uh, Corona. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my I and my family we we. we we was we, we had planned to, to to make a trip to Australia for about four weeks, and uh, normally the trip would be starting uh, uh, last Friday. Yes. Yeah. No. Last, yes, Friday, last Friday. Yes, last Friday. Yes. Seven yes. days ago. Seven days ago. 
normally if if we had no corona uh, I, I were uh, I and my family or my family and I were on the trip now in Australia uh, to find some green tree yes, to, to, yes <laughs> exactly my, my son said it uh, we, we we try to find some uh, green tree python in the Iron Range National Park park only for photos not to take it with me yeah. <laughs> I won't to, yeah, of course. Trail, yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, I I was uh, 10 times uh, before in Australia and uh, looking for snakes make some pictures and have fun uh, but I uh, never was before in, in the Iron Range National Park and it's very it's not so easy to go there because it's very rough streets and uh, you need a special car for this and it was hard, very hard to, to rent, rent some the car, but uh, we, we, we couldn't go there uh, yes, uh, because of the corona diseases. Yes, uh, uh. Yeah. But um, I think I, I before I die, I, I want to go uh, to uh, West Irian uh, one time again. But, mm -hmm. but West Irian is very hard. You must carry all your food, all your water, all your tents and also in, in the high mountains uh, of the Berlin Pythons. And uh, yes, uh, you need a good condition. And uh, uh, it's it's good for your body to lose. Yeah. Last time I, 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 I lost about 20 kilos. I, I wow. was there. And, <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's not so easy to travel there and, and, and stay there. It's... Uh, uh, but uh, I think next year or, or the year after next year, I, I must go there the, uh, again. And that's, that's uh, still a dream of me to, to go to West area one time more. Yes. Wow. That's very cool. So, <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I don't no, I don't okay. understand you in a moment. Yeah. Your, your phone's breaking up a little bit, Dave, but yes. I was going to say, um, so I, I looked on your Facebook and I saw that you have um, some Mexican chain snakes. Uh, you have some, some uh, um, splin uh, spinning a lotus <laughs> that I, for some reason, yeah. I was having trouble yeah. bouncing. Um, what other, how many species are you working with? Oh, it, it it depends. I, I your son's I, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm. He's lying uh, yes. at this time. <laughs> I, I'm 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 a biologist, yes, and and uh, for about 18, 18 years, I was uh, breeding uh, reptiles and snakes uh, as a professional, yes, and uh, since eight years, uh, I stopped this. I'm working in a, a pharmaceutical company at the moment, and I have reptiles only as hobby, yes. But at the moment I have about, with my hatchlings, about 200 in my facilities, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was working with about, thinking, 50, 60 species of snakes during uh, the 50 years and uh, for about uh, 25, uh, spaces of, of lizards and, and monitors and gila monsters. Uh, but I don't know this exactly. At the moment, I have about 25 different spaces. Uh, I would say more. <laughs> <laughs> in my facility. I have also some, some poisonous snakes and, and a lot of uh, culprits and, and pythons also. Yes. Wow. I have enough snakes. I'm 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 a I'm a freak. I'm crazy about mm -hmm. snakes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's right where, where we are. I mean, we we yeah. also enjoy them. So it's really cool. What's your favorite species that you've worked with before, or that you're working with now? Uh, yeah, I I think two of my favorite species are, are the Berlin spiders and and the Eastern indigos. Yes, yeah. uh, I, I I like them both very much. Yes. I, don't know, oh, I like all snakes. I, I, I sometimes I'm thinking in my life before, yes, I was a snake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I see some videos when when people uh, 
uh, killing killing snakes oh. or, or or either when I see an indigo is eating a rattlesnake, that's normal in, in the nature, but I can't see this. Yes, <laughs> when the indigo eats a rat, that, that's okay. But if the indigo is eating, eating a rattlesnake, I can't see this. I'm, I'm so, yeah, I'm thinking like a snake and, and I'm feeling like a snake. And I, I need all the time hot temperatures. Yes, I'm, I'm like a reptile. <laughs> Uh, uh, last year, I, I went with my family to, to Canada. My, my, my wife wanted a little bit cooler, but, but it's not my country. Yes, it's, I, I need sun, I need uh, hot temperature, I need reptiles and especially snakes. Mm -hmm. if, if, if a country has no snakes, I, it's not my country. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, where is it... Um... Dave Kaufman went there. Where is it in Canada where they have the big breeding balls of garter snakes? Is it third to the M, right? Yeah, that's that's a part of Canada, but, but it's more in the north, I think. And and you must be, I, I was there in the summertime, and uh, you could find them in the springtime when they're, they're coming out of hibernation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was three weeks in Canada. I, I, I was looking for snakes, but I saw only two that garter snakes, no snake alive. Not I. I wasn't sawing so much animals Canada, in Canada. It was a lot of trees, a lot of rivers, uh, <laughs> a, a lot of cars on on the on the streets during this this season. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not 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 my country. <laughs> mm. Canada is not really a herping destination by any means. Um, I no. go up there to fish, and that is it. Yeah, you, you must go to for fishing. I, I, I were several times in uh, uh, Arizona, Nevada. Uh, I, I like these places very much. Uh, and Arizona, Arizona is a special snake for, for harpers. Uh, uh, sorry, a special place for harpers. You could find a lot of uh, lizards and snakes there very easily. That's a very, very great country for me. Yes. Uh, I think it was five or six times there with my family. I'm coming there again in the future, for, uh, for sure. Yes. Mm. Very cool. That's great. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so I take it you have a really great group of people you meet up with in Arizona, and you guys have some den sites you go to, um, hibernaculums. No, I, uh, I don't know uh, so many uh, people in, in Arizona, so I, I was trying to find my, uh, my snakes at my own. Uh, I, I, had a, uh, I, I know, do you know Frank Reeds? He, he has a, a guana farm in, in Tucson, but, but, but he's retired now. It's, it's the only uh, people I, I, know they, uh, I know from Arizona. I, I'm going there with my my tent, or or or, or I I rent a motorhome and, and driving to, uh, through the nature and and uh, looking for for uh, some uh, animals, snakes and and lizards, but but without help, with help it's much easier, I think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do the trip again and need a little help make sure to reach out to me or Benjamin. I have a lot of friends that go herping in Arizona and have some very beautiful spots that no one goes to. Okay. Um, lots of den spots. Um, there's areas they go to where there's den spots where you can take out a chair and just sit there and reptiles will come and go all day long. Okay, I, I, I will do this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next year, we, 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 we try to, uh, to, to make this trip for this year. We want uh, to try to go to Australia. But, but the year after, I'm sure I'm, I'm coming uh, back to Arizona. And, uh, and I will, it would be very nice if I got some help to find uh, the reptiles in the nature for, for taking some yeah. great uh, pictures. Yes. Yeah. When you come out, we'll make it very, very easy for you. I promise. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so I, I think I must, I must come this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's also very, uh, very hard to get in the states or, or, or get back from from the states uh, 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 at the moment. Uh, but uh, I think uh, 
and I hope next year it's it's easier to 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 drive oil. Yes? And uh, I I will come to to Arizona uh, again. That, that that's sure. Perfect. Well, if you come if you come anywhere in the United States, just let us know. We'll we usually can find somebody that's in that area. Okay. Yes. Uh, my 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 favorite st uh, states are the southern states. Yeah. Yeah. The warmer states <laughs> with more heat and more snakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. So we are. I personally live in Missouri, and the beautiful thing about Missouri, other than the fact that it gets really cold here is being in the middle of the country, we get a lot of northern species and a lot of southern species that all merge here. So in the state of Missouri, I believe there's 28 different species of snakes you can find. Um, and on a property I was living on, there was 18 different species just in the backyard in the forest. Oh, great. So, so Missouri, not great, but lots of snakes. Okay. So perhaps uh, Missouri, it's also opportunity to come in the future. Yes, I hopefully will send you pictures of pygmy rattlesnakes and timber rattlesnakes today. As soon as I leave here, that's where I'm going, and I also yeah. might go out for mud snakes tonight. Okay, I I, I wish you good luck, yes, and, and, <laughs> and a lot you. of fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, the uh, let's go back and talk a little more about bones, if you don't mind. Um, so, no what was the first year that you successfully produced them? You're two. You've had two successful seasons, or did you have success years ago? No, no. Two. I had two successful seasons. Last year it, it, it uh, was the first time, and and this year it was the second time. In in the eighties, I I had no uh, female uh, for breeding the. Uh, uh, like I said, that the small feeding uh, was dying uh, some weeks after I, I got it, and I had only three big males. And uh, since uh, six year, years, I, I have girls again. And so, uh, yes, with five years, or last year, it was the first successful breeding with two babies. Yes. So, just Did about I, as soon as you got a it, female, you found a way to be successful with breeding bullets yes as in you didn't try too many times you almost got it the first try no yes yes yeah yes, yes. but but i'm keeping snakes uh, since a long time and, and that's a that's the main reason burns are not i would say not so easy to breed like like ball pythons yes. you, <laughs> you, you you must have a a feeling for the snakes. Yes, if you have the feeling, and uh, you, you, I, I said you, you, you must listen to the snake. What they are doing. What's what's the right time to bring them together? Yes, and if you have this feeling, you, I think it's not a problem to breed the boils pythons. But but you 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 couldn't breed them like uh, like king snakes. Taken cold in the winter, put them out of out of hibernation, feed them uh, two times after shed to, to bring the female and the males together and uh, uh, for, for the eggs or, or, or something like this later, you, you have uh, your first eggs. Yes. That's by king snakes or, or most North American snakes or, or, or Europe snakes, very easy. But by tropical snakes, especially as pale birds, pythons, it's, it's not so easy. To, it's, uh, it's much harder to, to get success. Well, and I couldn't agree more with any species you work with. If you pay attention to the body language of the animal, it tells you more than anything. Um, even yeah. we do boa constrictors here, and a lot of people breed them based on the season. But what I've found over the years, especially when you have a lot of them, that they kind of cycle whenever they want to cycle. Their generations past wild caught at this point. Um, five or six generations pass with a lot of them. And in our facility, we just kind of keep an eye on the females. Um, the body language of the female tells us a lot about what's going on. So no matter what species you work with, um, there's a lot of great literature out there to teach you how to do it. But in the end of the day, just paying attention to your animals and what they're doing tells you everything about 
the breeding and anything involved in working with a species. So again, couldn't agree more with what you're saying here. Just simply paying attention to the animal, you can be very successful if anything, hopefully. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, first special information. Yeah. If you are the first person to hear this. Um, yes, uh, I, we, we are talking the whole time about the bird spider. And I said I have eight, eight hatchlings from, from, from the clutch. But uh, I at the first time I, I told this uh, to somebody uh, not um, of Familia. my family. Yes, uh, I have a second clutch. Oh, that's Congratulations. great! That's wonderful. Uh, and, and, this, uh, and this clutch is also in in the incubator. Uh, uh, the clutch was uh, fifteen eggs. It's great. All fertile, all fertile, but. Uh, until now, five five died, and I think I I had ten uh, left in the incubator, and they must be hatched next week. I hope so. Hmm. Yeah. Well, cross the fingers for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very good. That's great. That's excellent news. Yeah, consistency. That's amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what your thoughts are on eggs going bad during the incubation process. Um, is it egg orientation possibly? Um, do you think just, uh, what are your thoughts on losing eggs during the process? I don't know. I, That's I, fine. I don't know. I, I never had this again. If I have had unfertile eggs, they must die. That's correct, yes. Normally, if I had python eggs and they are laying about two, three, four weeks, yes, and, and looking very perfect, they were all the time uh, hatching by me, yes. But by Berlin's eggs, I had eggs that they were uh, lying in the egg incubator 50 days, perfect, white, and looking very, very good, very well. And, uh, and uh, the eggs uh, uh, died. I don't know why. I don't know the reason for this. If I know it, I, I would make it better next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't say this to you. Yeah. What's the reason for this? Uh, uh, do, you, yeah. do you think maybe it's too warm and they don't, they're supposed to take longer maybe? I, uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, a, a guy from Switzerland, uh, Brad the Berlin's Python also, and, and he had uh, 12 eggs and 12 babies hatched. Yes? And uh, the incubation temperature was a little bit higher than mine. He, he, he was uh, taking 31.5 uh, uh, degrees Celsius. Yes? Um, so I, I I don't think it's it's the temperature. I, I, I don't know it. Yes? Mm. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, but uh, I can't say it. 31 oh, I in tried my mind time. Hot. I don't know why. Um, he can always play an issue. Um, so here's a question. Um, now, you've had your eggs in a nice ball all stuck together. When they're in the incubator, you're not separating them. You're putting them in as is from the female, right? Yes. Now, have you noticed that eggs near the top or the bottom of the cluster are going bad or static, like one from this side, one from that side? Yes. Uh, yes. It's, uh, when I took the, uh, the eggs away from the females, yes, they wasn't like a, a whole ball, yes. They, they was uh, separately, uh, separate from alone. So they are still together, but not a big ball, yes. And so it, it, there were some eggs on the top and, and some in, in the second row, yes. But, but it was no difference if there was on the top or on the second row, yes. Uh, mm. Some of these eggs die from the right side and on the left side and on the top. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, now, um, is there, and now these are all very basic questions and trust me, you are so far ahead of the game. Um, I'm not trying to, I don't even know what the word is, not un, 
Now, I don't know what the word is, so I'm not even going to use it. But um, so keep working our way through these questions. Like with Woma pythons, if a droplet of water, a little bit of water comes in contact or condensation on the egg, you can lose a lot of eggs with Woma pythons. Um, and do you think that could be the case too with bolens? It, it could be, but my bolens are uh, eggs get no contact with, with water. Yeah, I, no moisture <laughs> or condensation on the top of the container no, that yeah, drips down? Yes, I, I, I had some condensation off the top of the container, but it's never dropping on the eggs. Yes. This this was not not a reason. Okay. Uh, I, I know that by, by, by Womas or by tree pythons, they, if they get one dot or, of, of water on the eggs, the, the eggs is dying. Yes. But uh, the Berlin's eggs, for sure, they get no condensation water on the on the eggs uh, I that's that's absolutely sure so that's not a reason uh, why the eggs uh, died I, I don't know it but, but because some eggs are developed very very well yes and and the, the egg next behind it yes, uh, was dying the same temperature same humidity and, and they looked both very perfect and white and all things. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the reason. But I figure it runs it out in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. I hope you do. Yeah. Yeah. Some things are out of our control. Um, the viability of your male, his the strength of his sperm, um, the ones that come in contact with the fetus in each eggs could, could not be doing the job properly. Um, and nature always finds a way, or not finds a way, but you know, even like in ball pythons or other snake lane species, every once in a while you'll get a perfect egg and the female will kick it out. And you always try to go and incubate it, but a lot of times they just simply know, um, which always baffles my mind that they could actually know that one animal wasn't going to make it. But, um, you know, like you said, there's so many variables in this. Um, probably not worth overthinking unless you can find something in common with every clutch. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's true. And and for, for this year, I'm I'm very very happy. Last year the fertility rate was very bad, yes. Twelve eggs, only three fertile. And uh, this, this year I have had uh, more than thirty eggs and only two were infertile. The rest of the eggs were were fertile, were perfect. And I uh, yes, it was other reason why the eggs uh, was dying, as I don't know why, but uh, shit happens. <laughs> Shit does happen, buddy. Um, <laughs> but that was the most scientific thing we said this whole time, by the way. Um, so, but, but, well, oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. But you must be happy with this, what you get. Yes. And I'm happy with eight, eight nice little bell pythons, pythons. And perhaps next week I, I have some more. Yes. So, yes. Uh, I, I'm happy, yes. Uh, you, you could also say, yeah, if I had a 30, it would be better. But yeah, I'm happy with that, what I get. And yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. how many of the babies that you've produced that you've held on to um, kept? All of them. That's it. The, uh, last year, I had two babies. I I hold them for me. and And this year... I uh, want to keep uh, minimum one pair, pair also, perhaps are two pairs, and the rest I'm, I'm selling. Okay. Gotcha. I, I need some money for my new trips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you come to America, bring a couple in your handbag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I never brought a snake from... Uh, Germany to the States. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never. Mm. Never. Mm. Also, uh, all the times, uh, the, the, the other direction. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I, oh, go ahead. Well, I, yeah. I don't know. I, just, I was going to get into lizards a little bit if you wanted to yeah, keep on both. Lizards. No, no, I'd love to talk some lizards. Do you have you guys? You've kept a lot of species. Have you kept any blue tongue skinks? Yes. Uh, that, that the normal blue tongue skink uh, from the Gigas from uh, uh, New Guinea. New Guinea. Yeah. I, I kept them and bred them. Uh, 
very nice uh, pet skink for for everybody. He, he's eating uh, everything, uh, cat food yep. and fruits, yep. and, and uh, pr pr producing babies nearly every year. It's it's a very nice and easy keeping uh, animal for beginners, and also very interesting for uh, for people who are a long time in in the hobby. Yes, I, I had. Uh, this kind of blue tongue skinks for for many many years. Hmm. Have you ever worked with Australian species? Uh, no, because they are they are very very hard to get here in, in Germany, and uh, the the price is is crazy or was crazy. All and Australian, all of, uh, for, for for the pythons, it's it's uh, it was going uh, down 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 the last years for Australian pythons. Bomas are very cheap, blackheads are cheap, yeah. Also but, carinas yeah, are going yeah. down. Yeah, they are also going. But uh, skinks are, are, are not so easy uh, to, to get. Yeah. Yeah. We have friends that have them in, in uh, Germany, and I actually imported um, a pair of northerns and a pair of easterns from Germany uh, a few years ago, and they weren't cheap. <laughs> they weren't cheap. Oh. But uh, I think they're a fun species. Dave and I, we talk about them all the time because of we both keep them and, and we breed them. It's funny, in America, there's not a lot of people that are actually successfully breeding the, the uh, Indo species of, of skinks. They do some here and there, but not, not crazy easy. And uh, we had a guy on, Vin Russo, who said, oh, they're very easy to breed. I never hear people say that anymore. So it's it's cool. It's very interesting that you were very successful with them. Yes, and and yeah, it was it wasn't a problem to keep a breed. And yes, I, I I made nearly nothing. Feed them. Uh, that's all. Keep them together the whole year. And and I had every year uh, a lot of babies for my female. Uh, I, I have only I I had only uh, one pair for about. 15 years long, yes, and uh, they, they produced minimum 10 times during this period. Wow. It was, was, was not a big problem, it was not a big deal, yes. yes. And, yeah. and, and I was working uh, uh, also with, with a lot of uh, Australian monitors. I, yeah. they, I, I get them also from, from the States, uh, uh, Kimberly Rock monitors and... and, and uh, and one to us like this, yes, yeah, so and very interesting yeah, and very nice. Well, I, I love the yeah, yeah. That's cool. So, um, tell us some more about some of the adventures you've taken around the world. Maybe some of the things you've seen in the wild, interesting things along the way. Um, anything that has brought you over the years? A story I just I love telling. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, very. Uh, oh, what's what's the best? Yeah, is uh, years ago. I think I I was the second time uh, in Australia. I was uh, looking for snakes with with a friend of mine, and uh, to 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 make nice pictures. And uh, we. Uh, we was driving at the night time and, and catching the snakes, uh, LLPs, very, very fast snakes. And uh, uh, during the night, uh, we, we, we keep them in bags, yes. And, and they, then they, at the daytime, in the morning time, they, they were uh, much cooler. So we, 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 we could release them to the nature and make some good photos. But, but one time I, I was uh, catching a, a King Brown on, on, on the tail. And and uh, pulling them out of of a bush, yes? and, and 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 want to hang it up, uh, take my hands very very uh, high in 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 the sky, yes. But this kind or, or, or this uh, king bound snake was such big, yes, that uh, they was lying, still lying. I, I'm not small, more than one meter on the ground, yes. So, and, and and she was uh, or he was very active and uh we, we we tried to get the snake in the back but it was in, impossible yes. so uh i i i 
I told my friend it's not possible to take a picture from here. I we we we, we must release it. It was too dangerous. Yes. Then I, I I took the snake and yeah and and uh, give it, it a little the swing, the swing uh, throw it away. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and normally if you throw the uh, the uh, the snake from the from the unsealed road, yes, and they are they are moving uh, away from you very very fast yes but but not this kind of king brown <laughs> she uh, yes the snake was uh, going around and uh, running after me so <laughs> i uh, yeah, i i was uh, jumping in the car and closing the door and the snake was uh, outside the door and was waiting for me then we drove away it was a crazy situation and normally you, you, you notice if you are on a snake trick you should uh, wear good shoes, mm -hmm. yes? uh, like boots or something like this. But it was at this time so, so, so hot in Australia. We was driving at the night time, only shirt on, uh, under trousers, mm -hmm. and and some flip flops. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it was a crazy story, yes. And and I I was young, uh, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, it made a lot of fun, but I think now I'm a little bit older, I'm more carefully. <laughs> yeah, of picking, up, picking up a big snake like that, especially. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and King, King Browns are, are, are very, very fast. Yeah. 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 I've um, heard of stories in the United States of coach whips going after people or kind of chasing them when you're chasing them. Um I think a friend of mine might have a video of his friend kind of going at one and the snake turned around and went at him and his buddy jumped up in the air like a little girl and ran away. Um, and it chased him for a few feet and then it kind of took off. But um, yeah, I've yet to be chased by a snake. Um, but I kind of hope I get chased by a snake at some point. Yeah, I, 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 heard, this, I heard this also. And uh, on my last trip to Arizona, I'm, I'm searching sin, uh, since many years for, for pink coach whip uh, racers. Uh, and, uh, and we saw it at the last uh, three uh, animals moving over the street. And I, I was running out of the car to, 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 to catch it, but they were too fast for me and they won't bite me. So <laughs> I had not a chance to, to catch them. But if you know somebody who has very nice pink colored or red colored coach whips, I'm still searching for them. I, I like the snakes. Also very intelligent snakes, a, a snake that they are very visible and uh, looking uh, for food. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting snakes for 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 big cages i like them very much yeah. hmm. there i feel in the united states i know there's a good population of the pink or red phase in texas and i saw this amazing picture a few weeks ago and i wish i would have saved it where it was a pink phase up in a tree and it had a rabbit hanging from its mouth and the meal no, was really too big for it did you see that wasn't that amazing <laughs> It's crazy. It was crazy. A, a very big rabbit, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I saw the picture right. on 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 uh, Facebook or something like that. Yes. It yeah, was very, it was a Facebook. It was a ma amazing uh, picture. Yes. Yeah, I follow as many herping groups as possible for field herping in the United States, just because you know I enjoy seeing what people are finding. And um, I think this year alone, talking mutations. I believe there was three albino timber rattlesnakes found this year in three different states. Um, and a friend of mine actually, or a friend of a friend of mine found one in Oklahoma a couple of years ago, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll send you a picture. You're going to really love this animal. And somebody yeah, yeah. the other day posted a picture of a eastern hognose, and it was a lavender color. Absolutely yeah. stunning. Um but I think about every year in the United States, we probably see about 10 different mutations pop up randomly. Um, a majority of them stay in nature. Um, a lot of field herpers don't like collecting in the United States, so they'll let those animals go. Um, I feel like more are let go than kept when it comes to mutations in the wild. Um, but no, there's always some cool stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, after this, me and you are going to be buddies because I'm going to be sending you some cool pictures every once in a while. You're really going to enjoy them. Yes, please do this. Yes, I enjoy it. Yes, 
<laughs> but um, I, I, found a picture of, I found a picture of that Coach yeah, Whip's falling his pet rabbit. Did you really find it? I didn't find, find it. it so fast. I was looking for it a couple weeks ago. I couldn't find it ever again. Was it this one? Yeah, yes, that's it's the it's picture I saw. <laughs> that's amazing, you right? Zoom in on that? Um, I think so. Yeah, I'm just sure. really, even if it's a closer shot of like the second half, the upper half of the animal where it's holding the rabbit. I I, I never uh, have seen such a big uh, coach whip. It's, it's, it's no. <laughs> It was huge. And by the way, Benjamin, save that picture and send it to me because I was telling somebody about it and I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay. It's yeah, it's an interesting one. But, yeah, I think the best picture I ever got in the wild was a rough green snake eating a prey mantis backwards. So the picture is the prey mantis hanging out of the snake's mouth and in the talons or whatever you call it, the hands of the prey mantis. It was holding on to a beetle it was eating before it got attacked by the snake. <laughs> That's crazy. And, uh, and you, you, are, you, are, you are taking pictures the, this night for, from your herping trip, or are you are collecting some animals for your stock? Um, I don't personally collect. Um, we have like 4,000 snakes in our building and about 200 <laughs> or 300 lizards. I don't need any more snakes snakes uh, I'm very content. Um, I uh, herping is like fishing for me I don't like to eat fish I like to catch them take a nice picture um, send it to all my buddies and then let it go and I do the same thing with herping just a couple really nice photos what kind of fish do you fishing I'm also fishing I We'll fish for anything, sir. Um, it just depends on the time of the year and where I live. When I lived in New York, I did a lot of bass, pike, muskie. We did a lot of trout and salmon. Um, where I live now, I've been doing smaller rainbow trout in streams, cat fishing, bass fishing. I've got a great spot for bowfin that I'm going to start going to very soon. Um, I like to fish for everything. Um, how about you? Uh, I want to catch some largemouth bass, but uh, in Germany that's not possible. <laughs> so I traveled to Norway to uh, catch some big halibut. Um, Very cool. And then I fish here in Germany for walleye, um, perch, and pike. I like walleye. It tastes Your good. walleye and perch? Yes. Yeah. Your walleye and perch are twice the size of ours. You guys have monster sized walleye and perch. Ours look like babies compared to yours. Yes, we. Uh, my biggest walleye was 95 centimeters. Wow. Uh, it's about uh, three feet. Three feet and uh, three feet, yeah. Two inches. Three feet and two inches was my big uh, biggest walleye, and uh, uh, you can catch here perch uh, like uh, up to two feet, and that's a big perch. Yeah, that's huge for here. That's yeah. way bigger than us. <laughs> yeah, our perch are like this big. Sometimes they're yeah. oh, wait, wrong figure. I, Sometimes they're this big, but they're usually this big. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by us you can catch them up to uh, two feet that's uh i saw many uh fishing uh, clips in uh, uh youtube videos uh, from the united states and when they are ice fishing or something like that the perch they are catching are every time very very single <laughs> uh, very uh, small yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's Your phone broke up. Say it one more time. It's broke up. That, that's, that, that's a big uh, hobby with my son. Fishing. We, you break up. 
if we can't hear you. Uh, I'm muted. <laughs> there you go. Your phone was breaking up. Yeah. That's fine. It's just a very bad phone. But um, yeah, I'm fishing. I do fishing, and your northern lake are very big also. There's a tackle company. I think it's Savage might be the name of it. Yes. Savage Gear. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love their artwork. I think their artwork is hilarious, and I see a lot of their lures being used. He said their artwork is hilarious, and a lot of their lures he sees being used. The lures. Okay. Yes. Yeah, say, I'm, I'm, they make crazy lures like snakes or frogs or ducks and something like that, rats. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, mo most by us, most the pikes are going to eat something like that, but not walleye and perch. They, it's too big for them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do I sound better? Oh, sometimes it's fun. Just there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. He's in the nature now. Yeah, but he's back. Yeah. yeah, he's back now. I'm back. I. I'm done talking. Benjamin, yeah. <laughs> you're doing all the talking, buddy. No, you're doing great. Um, but yeah, so I I think this is fun. Hans, I mean, or Hunter, this has uh, been a super great experience. Is there anything else that you want to talk about, like other lizards or, or snakes that you keep or anything that you'd want to share experience with? Part of what we do is we want to get people to um, – share their experience on how to be successful uh, so that it's in, you know, a digital world, it's saved. So years from now, people can look back and say, oh, that's how you do it. Or, oh, that's how we used to do it or, or something like that. Is there anything that was like a real aha moment, like where you had a great idea and it really worked out that you want to share? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 I, I have a little story uh, uh, about the past. For, for, for many years ago, I, I had the tiger red snakes and, and also the bullets python, but I have for both no su success with breeding because by the, by the bullets I had no female and my first uh, tiger red snakes mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very beautiful, late perfect eggs, but uh, no eggs hatched. Yes, and uh, I uh, about seven years ago, I I said to me uh, before I stop this hobby or before I am dying, I must to breed the tiger, red snakes, and the bird python. And now I I've done it. So normally I can stop <laughs> keeping reptiles, but yeah. I'm a freak. I, I won't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, at, the, the most amazing uh, hatching in in my life was uh, in the eighties. Uh, the first hatching of my of a green tree python. Uh, this was the yes uh, most the most exciting moment uh, in in, in, <laughs> in my reptile life. <laughs> 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 but the pollen hatching was also nice, but but the first uh, uh, the uh, female bred the eggs at their own, yes, and after forty eggs, uh, forty eight days, uh, she 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 loses the contact to uh, to the eggs a little bit, and and the heads of the babies was uh, wow. looking uh, out of the the rings of the uh, of the female. It was it was amazing. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I I I, I never forget uh, forget this this picture when I opened the incubator in 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 the morning and and had a look on I I had so special homemade uh, hide boxes for the for my tree pythons where they can uh, uh, incubate their, their eggs at their own the females and I I looked in the moment in the incubator I I took the hide box with a tree python in the incubator. And I was looking at the incubator and the babies uh, watched you was watching me as yeah, so the baby uh, uh, tree python. This was amazing, amazing uh, feeling. And 
it was a, a, a amazing experience in, in, in my life. Yeah. That's great. If, if you do not get that rush when you produce a reptile, you shouldn't be producing reptiles. Um, especially the first time, like mine was boa constrictors. It was two o'clock in the morning. I called everyone I knew until someone finally answered the phone. Just so I could tell I just produced baby boas. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, that's every uh, every time a, a, a nice experience and and every year. I'm I'm happy when hatching time is when when the babies come out of the eggs. I'm I'm also happy if if some king snakes are hatching. As I I produced uh, uh, about uh, some hundreds in my life, but it's all the time uh, a very nice experience if you see that the little snakes looking out of the egg. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, oh well oh i'm sorry ben go ahead bud uh i was gonna say what how did you get the tiger rat snakes to breed i we i personally keep a, a handful of old world rat snakes like the rhino rats and the bamboo rats and uh, mandarins things like that how did you have success with the tiger rat snakes uh I, I, I keep them se separately in in big cages. Uh, so the females and the males uh, 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 separated in in each cage. Uh, I in in the springtime I'm uh, feeding the uh, the females a little bit uh, more than than the normal time, and uh, I'm also a little bit. Uh, Watching at the at the males what they are doing and and when they more males getting more active moving more around then I put them in the cage uh, with the uh, female tiger rats and uh, after some minutes or some hour, hours uh, you can see uh, that the first uh, matings uh, and uh, uh, last year I had from one female and this year also two two clutches I I separate them. Uh, when they are gravid, I, I, I take the males out of the cage and let the female alone till they lay the eggs. And uh, after the egg laying, I uh, feed the female heavy again. And so I, I could produce last year and this year uh, two clutches of tiger rat snakes, yeah. two fertile clutches. Uh. And I, I think it's also, you, uh, some people keep them all, all the time together. It could also working, but I think if you separate them, and they are alone. the The breeding behavior from the males is stronger than you keep it all the time together. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's working. Yeah, it's, so that's great. The one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go. Were you just gonna say pretty cool? Yeah, pretty cool. Right. So the one thing that I like about you as a breeder is a lot of people talk about paying attention to the female what the female is doing and when the female does this it's time to breed but with you you pay most of your attention to the male which i find very interesting um do you think the male's activity is based on a pheromone or a scent that the female is giving off yeah, that yes, of course. it's time to go on okay yes that the, the males like are that. Yeah, that the males are smelling when the females are uh, ready to breed. I can't do this, but the males, <laughs> snakes, they are, they are able to do it, yes. Mm -hmm. And and if you watch the males, yes, uh, uh, the males, uh, the, 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 the behavior of the males, then you could see when the female is ready for breeding. Yes, that's that's correct, yes. So the, 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 the female are all the time the same doing. They're, they're, they're not moving too much. They're feeding heavily. And the males also, but when they smell the pheromones of the female, they they are more active and they want to get out of the cage. They want to get in the female's cage, yeah? and that's a uh, that's a good sign that the female is ready to breed. Yeah. Man, there you Michael go. Dave. Uh, his his phone's breaking up again, but Dave. 
is very excited about pheromones in not just snake species, but in several species. He he's, uh, has these thoughts and ideas about um, maybe if the males, if two males smell each other, uh, if that creates a situation where they're competing um, for the female, or if maybe it makes one of them not want to breed, you know, so if the males are too close to each other, um, if that, if we think that that would be a problem. So I don't know if you've seen uh, males being too close to each other, if that was an issue, but. Yes, and it, it's all the same in, in the nature. Uh, in, in the right seasons, yeah, uh, when you are uh, uh, watching for snakes, yes, in the breeding seasons, uh, most of the time you find male snakes. They are uh, wa walking around and, and, and looking for, for some females. Yes. They are more active and, and they, they find the females uh, through uh, smelling uh, the pheromones of them. That's, that's the only chance they have. Uh, snakes to find is very hard. Yes. <laughs> if you can, uh, can't smell them, uh, it, I think it's for a snake it would be very, very uh, hard to, 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 to find a, a, a partner with, with, without signs like this, like pheromones and uh, mm. something like this. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So, last question. Last question for me, and you can hear me again, right? Yep. Do you introduce the and if <laughs> I don't know. You guys are both locked up or what? Oh, well, we are here. We are here, but, but I haven't. Uh, you didn't understand what he said, right? I don't understand it. Okay, so what he said was, and I, it's, I only reason I know this is because I. I know Dave pretty well. His question is, do you introduce the male to the female's enclosure or do you introduce the female to the male's enclosure? Um, and do you ever put maybe two males or put one male in and then remove so that another male goes in there and can smell the male so they kind of have that compete uh, competition? Like how do you, how do you introduce them? Uh, yes. What 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 do you think? What makes sense uh, to 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 take the male in the female's cage or the female in the male's cage? I will. So, in in nature, mm -hmm. in, from what you're saying, I would say the male would go into the females. Yes. Correct. That's that's absolutely correct. And 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 I do it like this. I I, I keep the females in her cage. And introduce the male in in the female's uh, cage, and I, I also if, if the male is uh, uh, shows no uh, sexual behavior, uh, uh, shows no sexual uh, uh, behavior. I I try to to introduce a second male, yes, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes is successful, sometimes not, and in. In, Can you hear me, some, Ben? Uh, in some spaces, you must be very careful. Oh, you can uh, hear me. Talking. Are they still there? Because I just got a little spinny thing. Yeah, they're there. And they're talking. Oh, they just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no That's problem. Well, uh, yes, I I uh, try this also, yes. But uh, on on some on carpet pythons or tree pythons, you, you, you must be very careful because they... Uh, they would bite each other very, very hard. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and yes, uh, the winner takes it all. The winner uh, stays in the cage uh, and uh, had the chance to to pr produce the next generation. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's uh, different from from each species. In in some spaces, it's working very well, and in in, in other spaces, it's uh, it's not working. I, I, I have a, a, a story uh, for emerald tree pores. I, I had one pair of emerald, emerald tree pores for five or six years, and I uh, 
they was very uh, doing very very well yes and i keep them together in the cage but they never breed i separate them and keep them uh, and bring them together again they never uh, breed uh, I, I tried this for for several uh, years then i uh, i get from the states uh, a second male yes and uh, after the quarantine i i put them in the cage yes and then the males was Oh, it's hard to explain. They, they, they was making a fight. They was crawling around each other, yeah, and constrict each other. Then, then I uh, uh, separate them. Uh, you could see some uh, some uh, dells or, or, or balls in the bo in, in the body uh, of, of the of the males. Uh, uh, some days longer, yes. So much they uh, they constrict each other, yes. And after I, I put one male out, the next day, the old male was breeding. Oh. Was mating, yeah? and, and, and years before, he shows no behavior. Yeah? And, and this was also <laughs> at the start of my Emerald Tree uh, for a breeding collection. Yes, it was very uh, working uh, very successfully. But you must be, uh, uh, be the snakes at this situation. You, you can't leave them alone. That could be dangerous or, or the death for one of the snakes. Yeah. Yeah. But it was working very successfully. Also with other uh, uh, MRL tree boards I got years later on, yes. Yeah, that's also excellent. A, a very good story. No, that's great. It's, uh, we, I, I always think about the competition and I know Dave does as well introducing two males near each other so they have a competition for the female you know to help get them to want to breed but i've never heard the story where emerald tree bows need to like really fight to to turn one uh to start breeding that's that's a good story so um dave we're, we're almost at the two hour mark do you have any questions that we want to add i don't want to Take up too much more of these guys' night. I mean, I, I'm having a great time. I, I could probably talk all night, but. <laughs> um, I mean, the fact that you guys can't understand anything I'm saying anymore, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> yeah. No, Um. I mean, I am looking forward to going out and finding rattlesnakes today, so maybe my time is up but if you guys want to keep going you are more than welcome but honestly it was a pleasure i had a great time i love the conversations i really hope you make it to the united states next year i would love to put you on some animals okay yes i will do this uh, I, I will contact you uh, uh when i'm uh, coming to the states again uh, next year is not sure next year perhaps we try to go to australia but uh uh, the year after next year, in, in two years, I'm sure uh, we are going to the sta states again. And I'm, I'm, uh, or we are very happy if we have somebody to to help us to to find some reptiles and snakes to to make some very nice, interesting pictures. Yeah. That's awesome for sure. And we'll make sure to fit in some fishing if you want to do a little <laughs> bit of fishing. Well, fun, okay, uh, we can also do fishing. <laughs> But in Arizona, there are not so so many water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But if there is, we'll find it, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much uh, for coming on. Um, this has been great. I, I think it's been super educational, and I think people are going to really get a lot out of this. So um, it's been excellent meeting you and, and talking with you. And if you ever need anything you know, from us, feel free to, to contact us anytime. Um, we're going to, we go, we put these on on Saturdays uh, in Eastern Standard Time uh, at noon. So this one's not going to be this Saturday, but the following. So anybody that's listening, you know, make sure that you continue to watch Her Pals Rock and um, like, share, and subscribe. And go check out uh, Hunter Franz on Facebook. And you'll see all the, the cool pictures he posts, uh, amazing animals, and uh, just a wealth of knowledge. So I really appreciate you guys coming on. It's been great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you. And meeting your son and hearing your wife in the background. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like she's the brains of the operation over there. She put all the words in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> like every time. <laughs> it's absolutely normal. <laughs> it's the same in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> but again, right. really do appreciate you coming on today. Looking forward to talking to you in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank nice you very much. Voice guys. Yeah. So, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good rest of your holiday. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.